In this video, we will discuss how to read particle drawings and how to predict the products uh, from a particle drawing. So what I have down here is um, some particle drawings. And just as a review, uh, we are going to follow the law of conservation of matter. So my product box over here will still have the same number of circles and squares that I started with. And um, what's important is that if shapes are touching, that means that they are bonded together. Okay, so I have a reaction here and it gives me the key. It says nitrogen are squares and oxygen are circles. And so these are my reactants. There's oxygen, that would be circle, circle. And then nitrogen monoxide would be square, circle. So the first thing I do is I go and I label everything because sometimes when I look at shapes, I can get things confused because they're not labeled. So I'm gonna first go through and I am going to label everything. Okay, and then I'll do that down here as well because this is a, the second example which has the same reaction, just different quantities. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to go through rounds of the reaction. Here's what I mean by that. In every one round, I am using two NOs and one O2. And how do I know? That is just my coefficient. So let's go through round by round and see what we get. So let's try one round. Um, I'm going to use an NO and another NO. That would be two NOs and then just an oxygen gas, so those are now consumed. And then I'm gonna to go to my product side and I need to make sure I draw what is being produced. I'm gonna draw uh, two NO2 molecules, that's how many I'm producing. And um, I know that NO2 is, with nitrogen in the middle, we could do a Lewis structure to prove it, but we don't need to worry about that right now. And so I, this is just from one round. And then I'm gonna try and do another round, and for another round, I need um, an oxygen, and then I need two NOs. But what I run into is that I don't have any more NOs. I actually only have one remaining. So what that means is now my reaction's over, and this guy and this guy were actually not able to react because I was missing uh, an NO molecule. So what that means is everything that did not get highlighted, I would consider that to be excess. And so my excess would be one oxygen, two oxygens, three oxygens, four oxygens, and then one NO. And on the right hand side here, I've asked what is the limiting reactant and what is the excess reactant? So what a limiting reactant is, is it is what you run out of first or what prohibits you from continuing on in your reaction. If you remember back to when we went through this and we were trying to cross out for a second round, it was NO that I did not have enough of. And so that prohibited my reaction from continuing. And so I would consider that my limiting reactant. And I actually had plenty of oxygen if I wanted to continue. And so that would be considered my excess reactant, O2. Okay, if I wanted this reaction to keep going, all I would have to do is just add some more NO and it would keep going. Okay, so let's do an, uh, another example. Um, we're gonna go round by round and see how many rounds we can get through. So two NOs for every one O2, and that's gonna give us two NO2, so I'm gonna draw those. That's one round. Let's try to do another round. NO, NO, and then oxygen. I forgot to label that oxygen down there. And so I'm gonna be able to get two more NOs, or NO2s. Let me try another round. I can get uh, NO, NO, and then oxygen. So I get another batch of NO2s. 
And then I notice that the last thing I have is just some NOs, and so um, I don't even have enough NOs if I had extra oxygen. And so um, I could say that I ran out of oxygen, so that would be my limiting reactant. But I also don't have enough NO. I need two more, or uh, I need two total to do another round. So I could also say that um, NO is my limiting reactant. And then I don't wanna forget to write my excess, and I have some NO left over, and so it would be considered excess. Okay, let's do a harder example. What we have in example B is the same type of problem except we're given the products. So I'm starting on this side of my reaction. And so what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I want to label everything. So water is gonna be square, circle, square. And then SO2 is gonna be circle, triangle, circle. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna label everything. And then I have this weird square triangle square right here. And if I look at the key, square is hydrogen, triangle is sulfur. So that's actually H2S, which is not one of the products. What that means is that this is actually my excess reactant. And so I can actually already answer this question. I have leftover H2S. And then that leaves oxygen must have been my limiting reactant because there was no more leftover. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go backwards. Every single reaction can go backwards. That doesn't mean everyone does easily, but every reaction can go backwards. So I can have like an arrow going backwards. And I'm going to move over my... Uh, H2S right now before I forget because it never reacted so I'm going to move it back over there and now I'm just going to go through round by round and see how many I can get through. Uh, I need two SO2s and two waters for each round so there's a water, there's a water, there's an SO2, there's an SO2 and when those two react and go backwards I get two H2S's and I get three O2's so I can draw those in here for what I started with and then I have three O2, so that looks something maybe like this. Okay, that was one round. Let's try another round. I get SO2, SO2, and then H2O, H2O. Okay, so I got another round. And what I'm going to get is two more H2Ss. And then three more O2 molecules. And now everything is crossed out. Um, remember, I already did move over the H2S, and so that's what I must have started with.